Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good I am evening. Justin with the Embroidery Nerd, and that is Jerry Lee. Yes, with Sunfacer. How are you? Sunfacer and the Embroidery Work. Mm -hmm. Nerd, uh, let's see. We've got a couple people showing up here already. Oh, we have Barb uh, here from North Minnesota. Barb. Hello, Barb. We have Brandy from Colorado. Hola. Tucson over here is represented with uh, Justin. Tucson, Arizona here. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, <laughs> where it so, snowed today. We're down a couple of nerds tonight. Uh, Matthew is on a plane somewhere, and Jeff is not feeling too well, so hoping a, re a speedy recovery for Jeff tonight. Yep. We also have Sheila. Hi, North Sheila. Carolina. And Cindy King. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. You're probably wearing shorts, aren't you, Cindy? <laughs> In Texas. <laughs> so tonight we're going to have a little fun digitizing a, uh, a little Christmas design. Ooh, um, I'm just, uh, for for hat purposes, to show you a little technique, a uh, few tips and tricks for for a good hat design. So uh, let's see, you ready to jump right into it? I'm excited. So, so is there a reason for this particular design or is this just something you're doing for Christmas or? Yeah, I figured it's probably a good time to start getting into the Christmas designs. And uh, after I finish this one, I'll uh, I'll post a link and give it to everybody so they have access to it. That's so they nice. Can around oh, sweet, sweet. So I'm yeah, excited. so it, it's, it's the time of the year, so. Yep. Awesome. I just found this cute little design that I, I hope that everybody likes. Nice. Well, let's get Cindy to that. King does say just leaving the office and yes, in shorts. And I believe I just, it's <laughs> seven o'clock where you're where you're from, Cindy, since you wanted to call me out on that earlier. <laughs> well, I just got back from running to UPS and I didn't quite make it to the post office, but I pulled off my scarf and I had mittens that have like I can my fingers are out and my um my thumbs are out for driving and I had the heat full blast so yeah it, it so snowed it's cold. it's cold in your area it snowed it like snowed oh yeah, wow we've got snow today yep it, it it's like, here <laughs> I think it was like 86 today here yeah mm -hmm. we've got a couple <laughs> few others here too hi Frank we got Frank from across the pond 2 a.m and Barb. Yeah. And we got another near uh, neighbor to you. Spoken yep, that's Washington. Inga. This is Dustin and Inga. I went over. Oh, okay. So there's Dustin or Hubs. I went over there and uh, spent some time with them on their machine. Oh, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> Six inches, inches of snow on the ground. Wow. Not, no, we have zero snow. It just came down and left. We were like, no, go, go back to Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> We also have uh, Letty here. Hey, and Letty. Cindy, oh, yes. Seven o'clock for the, the center, center of attention. <laughs> oh, man. Well, if we can't be at the center of the universe, we might as well be at the center of attention anyway. There you That's go. how I see it. Well, All show right, us so. this like, awesome dude. Oh, he's adorable, Justin. So we're going to take care of this little uh, penguin tonight and digitize for a hat. So uh, nice. let's jump right into it. Okay. So I have the penguin set at two and a quarter tall, which is pretty much a good size for hats. I know some machines have a little bit uh, less of a, of a max height that you can work with. Usually it's like two inches on, on some of the other smaller machines, but two and a quarter is what I usually generally go with uh, to, to maximize the size of a hat. So the first thing that I always do is I like to nail down a global underlay to make sure that the, the hat is going to adhere to that backing, to your, um, to your hat backing. Make sure that there's no shifting in the hat and the material. You got to remember you're working with a, a curved surface. So you really want to stabilize that, that sewing area to make sure you're not going to get any shifting or awesome. restriction issues. So. Uh, one thing I do do is to make sure uh, registration issues aren't a problem. Uh, when I say registration, it means how elements are going to line up 
and make sure that outlines, if there's any outlines, line up to to the shapes that they're they're supposed to be outlining. You don't have any stitches sticking out any direction. Um, so that's what registration is. It's to so make sure that everything is is lined up properly to make sure your design looks looks intact. Justin, I'm I'm going to grab a couple comments here. Okay. Um, I want to. Okay, so for Frank. It's 1 a.m. in the morning over there in England. Frank, we're so glad that you're still staying up with us. <laughs> and when you popped up the design, Jamie said that she loves it. So we're glad that this is like a cutie pie. Awesome. Barb loves <laughs> it. When, and Cindy loves that word global underlay. And I really like that too. It does describe exactly what you're getting and going for. So that there's no question where the underlay goes really good i like that exactly exactly so another another idea that that i think of as far as global underlay when i see this design for registration purposes i try to break up any hat design into kind of smaller segments to make sure you're kind of sewing all within i would say in a two inch area at the very most mm -hmm. and, and you're going to want to do it in parts so instead of just looking at the design saying like oh there's a white body there's a black outline i could throw the green and the red down at the same time yes you're you are going to be creating more color changes uh in breaking it up into segments but but you're going to really ensure the registration is going to look nice and your finished product is going to look nice so um, and the, and the, may i jump in just a second yeah uh, what what you're saying justin is is in, in, in kind of a different way if anybody wonders Here's the deal, and not that anybody was wondering what you're saying. I know that kind of sounded like that, huh? But that's not what I mean. What I mean is, what Justin is saying is, is that the design it will tell you what you need to do to make it work best for the application. And so that's why this design will have more trims and more color changes because he's digitizing for the item he's digitizing this particular right. design for that particular item so right. I, I exactly. think, yeah yeah exactly so when i'm when i first get this on screen of course i'm gonna i'm kind of gonna mentally plan out where i'm gonna go with it i'm gonna definitely uh, you know lay down the global underlay to to stabilize the whole shape mm -hmm. um but what i'm gonna do is since we have this nice kind of line that that cuts two segments apart that I know that I can use this to kind of cover two areas that might be overlapping. I'm gonna do the bottom half of his body first, come back and do the second top half of his body. And that way I'm gonna break it up into those parts that are gonna be best okay. to, to sew on a hat. Great. So I usually like using a running stitch with a, a longer stitch length for my global underlay just because I can control it a little bit more. Uh, another technique is to use a fill stitch that has a really light density. But I, I tend to use a, uh, a running stitch better. So, so uh, you one yourself, in other words, right? Exactly. You're, you're laying exactly. the you're, so you're controlling it instead of letting this. So this is a manual underlay, guys. This manual is where, he, yeah, the he's doing it himself. He's hand punching this design. One other thing I'm going to start with uh, that I noticed uh, because this because the, the body is pretty much symmetrical left and right. Sewing this on a hat because the hat comes off to the side here, as you can see, Wilcom's drop down the, the center point here. It's going to look it possibly can look weird centered on a hat because it's not this 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 hat is throwing off the center point see how it's not really in the center of his body right, and that, that, that will look odd i think really odd yes. so so what are you so going to do what i do is in will come you have this function here where you could actually change your start or your your center point of the design so i know height wise it's it's correct but i'm going to want to take my crosshairs and actually drop it right in the center of his body and that way it's going to give me my ruler at zero at the center of his body and that way I know I'm, so, I'm, not, I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm trying to stop you um, long enough to what tool did you use? It's actually when you have your ruler uh, mm -hmm. visible at the corner here, you could actually grab the, the corner oh, of I your see. ruler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. you can drag your, your zero oh. point basically anywhere you oh, want. Oh, that's pretty cool. You're changing the zero point. I like that. 
Thank so, you. no problem. So now that I know that this is my zero line here, I'm going to go ahead and use that to start my global underlay. I have my stitch length value at three and a half millimeters, which I think is a good length. Now, I don't want to start my needle, my first needle drop right in the center because that you're going to have the problem where your needle is going to be trying to go through that seam. You're going to have that several layers. You're going to have that, that dreaded seam that everybody tries to avoid. Uh, if you do drop it right in the middle, uh, there's a lot of times where you're going to get a, a needle break right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So I tend to go a little bit off to the side, just a little bit, and start my global underlay. So I usually go up and down, working my way from the center out. And I'm just going to take the, the full shape of my, of my shape here, come back, work right away back to the center. Kind of work my way out. And then come back around the perimeter. And I am insetting this stitch into the, to the inside of this uh, shape to make sure that you know, when there is that slight shift of the hat as you're sewing, you're not going to have any of the underlay stitches sticking out of that of that image. So I am going inside. Here's a question that we have from somebody at the Embroidery Nerd staff. How far off center fully off the seam on your start point since you're avoiding the uh, center seam? How far off are you going? Yeah, typically I go, I try to go not fully, fully off the center seam as you see the seam sewn on the hat, but that center seam as far as the the where the two pieces meet on a, on a six panel hat you definitely mm -hmm. want to be off that so i would say maybe five six millimeters off center so i usually finish it off by coming back to the bottom here just kind of do a few stitches up across the top and i'm going to work my way back to the bottom of the shape because i want to again so so from the bottom up, especially when you're doing fill stitches. So I tend to work in a color thread that's more contrast to the background so I can see what I'm mm -hmm. doing. So, and I'll just go back and, and put the proper threads in. And let me see here. So since the the body of the of the of the Penguin is going to be the main fill stitch that's going to cover the most area. I'm going to start with the, the fill. Uh, again, hats, you always want to work bottom up, center out. Uh, even though the, the feet are kind of the, the most bottom element of this design, um, the, the fills get to stabilize the area a lot better than just those few little thin lines. So I'm going to go ahead and even though they, they are lower technically than the fill, I am going to start with a fill stitch. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple comments. Okay. And this one is from Cindy. She said that she just loves that word global underlay and that Eric taught her that word. Yep. And then here we have Belle from Tennessee. Hey, Belle. And then we have somebody high in the sky who thinks that Penguin is absolutely adorable. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. All right. So I just plotted my point to my fill stitch. Okay. And typically what I like to do is, is uh, after I do each change in fill stitch or element that I do, I usually try to go back and make sure that my start and end points are going to be where they need to be, just so I'm not having to go through the whole design afterwards. So that's what I typically do is, is uh, and so I did my global underlay, which you can see here. And then I went to my fill stitch, which is the starting point, right where my ending point is. And I'm going from the bottom up at a 15 degree angle, which is typically what you want to use for a fill stitch. Justin, we have a question on your underlay from Jamie. For the global underlay, did you say the stitch length is 1.5? I thought you said, didn't you say 3.5? 3.5, yeah. 3.5. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to really mash in a lot of uh, close stitches when it comes to global underlay. You want to give that stitch length a little bit longer because it's not something you're, you're worried about coverage. You're just trying to get that needle penetration so that that hat gets you Thank know, you. here to the, to the back. And it covers the area with without driving your stitch count up as well, because I know. Right. And, you know, and the purpose of that, that longer stitch there, uh, Jamie, 
is to tack it down, but to do so with a softer softer hand. And honestly, if somebody can tell me why it's a hand, I'd like to know. But <laughs> it, 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 everything lays there. And really what it is, is it's more of an illusion that there is something there. It's just enough to do the job, but not enough to affect any other thing in the design. Correct. And yeah. let's see here. We've got Cindy asking, uh, it is really cute. How do you change your center if you want to off-center it for the sewing? So you've done it in the design. Is that now going to off-center the entire design? The point of origin is now off-center completely? Correct. The, the point of origin is going to be off-center. And, and I need to double check myself when it's at the very okay. end if I need to actually change the start and stop point of the design to that center. Um, I can't remember. I, I don't use this function all, all that often. Uh, typically, when I'm running, uh, when I'm digitizing a design, I will digitize everything to true center, just because it's not my decision how the hat's going to look, uh, you know, to the end customer. So, as an embroiderer, you could either ask your digitizer to offset that that center point, so you can center your needle on the on the hat itself, or you can do that when you're on the machine. You can offset your center point when you're actually setting up your center point and the machine. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. All right. So now that I've that I've set down the, the fill stitch, which is going to really stabilize the, the hat, I'm going to come back here and do a couple satin stitches for the penguins. Beans. We have we have a question coming in over the pond. No sure. unplay on the white bubble on the hat. Is there a reason for that? Under, so under the pom-pom on Santa's hat, is there underlay under there? We just can't see it because it's white on white. It came down a little bit. I'm not con too concerned about, um, this is an element out here. What happens is, is when there is a, an element kind of by itself that doesn't have any surrounding supporting elements, I tend to not try to do the global underlay in that area only because Question. because that element is kind of by itself and, and there might be some shifting in the hat there oh. is a chance of of those underlay stitches sticking out and because it is an element kind of like the ball at the end of a, of a santa hat it doesn't necessarily have to be exact you know if there is a little bit of shift like a millimeter here and there by the time i do that that ball at the very end which that's what i plan on doing um the fact that there's no global underlay that I have to worry about covering up, if there is any shifting at all, that ball doesn't have to be exact on the hat. So you don't have any wor uh, worries about the global underlay sticking out. And the, and the point is, is even though we can see this quite large on our screens, it's only 2.1, uh, 2.25 inches high. That's it. That's Correct. the totality of this particular. And I just want to let you know that we have Scott, Dialing in from Missouri. Hey. Hi, Scott. Okay. All right. There we go. He said, thank you. So I'm going to do a couple of satin stitches for the toes or for the feet. And I like copying and pasting when elements are really similar in shape, which these are pretty much from whoever did the art. I could see that they are very similar. So a lot of times I will use the copy and paste feature and then I can just make the adjustments that I need using the node editing tool. And I'm going to go ahead and again, start and stops are lined up so I don't have any unnecessary trims. The green diamond being the start point, the red crosshairs being the end point. So because these elements are so close to each other, I don't need to use any traveling stitches or walking stitches or running stitches because uh, these these elements, because I have them tucked up underneath the, the body of the penguin, these are just going to jump to each other since they're so close. So I will travel again, working your way from the center out. I did with the feet. Now I'm going to work my way over to the other side. Go ahead and copy and paste mirror. 
And something like this, again, uh, being a, a, a cartoon, the fact that these, you know, I copied and pasted, being that these, you can see that the, the feet's not exactly uh, mirrored image from, from the left to the right side. Something like this, again, it's a cartoon. I doubt anybody's gonna, you know, take out their micrometer and, and see that these are, are that much different. But if you do want to be exact, sometimes you see symmetrical designs where an element might be the same, but just kind of rotate a little bit. But for just to be exact, I'll go ahead and make these elements true to the art. So again, I'm going to check my start and end points. And we've got Jeff throwing popcorn from his sickly bed. He's got his micrometer out. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. So back to the digitizing. I tend to use my hotkeys a lot, especially for save. I do my control S pretty much after every element that I do, uh, just because if for any reason the power goes out or anything happens to the computer, you're not you know, 20, 30 minutes into a design, you'll lose all that information. So I tend to, uh, to save every single time I'm, I'm done with the section. So, okay. So we've done the white body. We've done the orange feet. So uh, now I'm going to do the black outline and the, the little wings of the, the penguin. Again, kind of starting the element from the center out. I'm going to walk my way over to this side and i am going to do a satin stitch for this wing and in case you do see some tools being used without me going to a toolbar i actually have a programmable uh, mouse that i program a lot of the hot key buttons to, to the functions that I use the most, uh, like a satin stitch or a fill stitch and whatnot. So that's why you are not seeing uh, me always going to the toolbars. So on this wing, I know that it's a little bit wider than, than the uh, other elements. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it. And it is at 6.5 millimeters. So at 6.5 millimeters, uh, th that satin is going to be a little bit wider, so it does have a tendency that if you don't use the proper density or the proper underlay, uh, those longer stitches have a tendency that you can possibly, you know, pull them apart. It's going to show a little bit uh, more fabric showing through. So on something that uh, that's a little bit wider, I'd say five millimeters and above, I start adding a little bit more heavier density and, and heavier uh underlay what kind of mouse am i using it is a alienware mouse it's got uh programmable buttons on the side there Ooh. And, uh, so yeah pretty fancy man yes i love it it's it's definitely handy and cindy king is sending well wishes to you jeff we hope you get better jiffy all right so the density and the underlay on this wider part, I'm going to go ahead and use a double zigzag uh, for two reasons, because you got the, the wider satin stitch and you also going to have these elements that are overlapping that, that satin. So those elements can have a tendency to, when they sew over it, they can pull it apart. So again, you want those underlay stitches to kind of help stabilize that, that shape. So we have the ending point to the traveling stitch there. So I'm going to change my starting point over to where that ended. My ending point here. I'm going to go ahead and walk back down to this element. Does, does Wilcom have an autosave feature by chance? It does. It autosaves every few minutes, but 
like I was saying a few minutes ago, I tend to do my hotkey every time I'm done with a element. Now I want to, to join in on that. I used to do that when I was digitizing uh, for a living, I did the same thing because my software had an auto save. However, it only auto saved every 10 minutes and it put it in really some strange place. And it was yes, just it's, to find. It's hard, it's hard to find. Yeah. And uh, it only does it every few minutes, which again, I every time I'm done with a with kind of an element, my mm -hmm. left hand automatically goes to that control S for save. So. Well, J Jeff says it does. It's about every five to 10 minutes. And sometimes it isn't fast enough. And boy, isn't that the truth. When you're in a design and you've just made a major change. And I, I, I learned never once to depend on autosave. It will fail you no. every time. If you want it done, you have to do it yourself. Because then you do Correct. know where it is located as well. Correct. So what I did here is I came down from this, uh, from this wing, came down, started the body, and I stopped the body short, as you can see here, because I want to go ahead and, and since the wing's kind of behind the body normally, kind of coming from the back of, of a penguin, I want to kind of have it where that layer is kind of behind the, the outline of the body. So cool. I'm going to stop, stop short here as far as the outline, put my end point here, change my starting point there, or yeah, starting point there, drop my ending point. And then what I can do is, since I know it's it sews the, this portion of the body comes up, so, so this portion of the wing, I'm gonna come back and just slightly overlap, continuing that side of the body. And what that's gonna do is, it's going to ensure, uh, since we kind of start and stopped an element, instead of just kind of coming back and butting up exactly where you ended off on that part of the outline, you kind of overlap it to, just to make sure that there's no gapage there. Nice. Well, you know, I have to say, I really like the treatment of these wings, even though they're small, a lot of people, a lot of digitizers uh, might tend to make those a fill just because they could do the entire bird really quickly. But by doing it this way, you have, a lot of dimension and we've got satin on satin they're going in different directions but this is like an eye popper when this is when this little guy is done and this is these are the types of things that we do to make our work be work that is desired rather than run of the mill is is, is treatments and and taking the time to do these little things like a satin wing instead of a thread. Yeah. yeah that's that's the biggest difference between auto digitizing and and real person digitizing. Yeah. Auto digitizing is going to see shapes and it's just yeah. going to try to find the fastest way to fill that shape. Yeah. So a lot of times, a lot of times you're going to see, you're going to see fill stitches for really thin satin where thin areas that should be satin stitches because the computer's just saying, all right, here's a shape. I just need to fill it and it, and it does what it thinks it should be happening. Yeah. Uh, Jeff has a question here uh, with the intersecting uh, areas of the satins. <laughs> what do you ensure they don't pull apart so not only the added density and the underlays are going to ensure that but also if you can see here i'm not coming at at them like at a 90 degree angle or perpendicular to each other where that underneath satin is going to be the, those stitches be right, right along the, the edge where if it does grab onto those stitches it will pull them apart i kind of come at them at, at an angle so these stitches here are coming at an angle so they they like, kind of blend in with with the direction of the other one so you're not going to have as much pulling apart when it's not perfect. i like that perfect. it's not it's not a grab effect exactly it's like, it's, it's it's kind exactly of, is that kind of blends yeah 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 kind of blends together instead of grabbing like on the zipper it. effect like when you're getting on a freeway and it's one car and the one car and one car i can see that's kind of what these stitches are doing is they're kind of zippering in to where they stand alone but they're together as well right right mm -hmm. and that that added uh double zigzag under underlay is going to definitely help stabilize that that those top mm -hmm. stitches to make sure you're not going to have that effect right nice nice okay so as far as the the registration issues i've done the whole bottom half of the of the, of the penguin so now i can focus on the top half so i know that 
these elements are in such a small area that you're not going to have any problems with, you know, the white fill, you know, shifting and coming back to the black outline or the feet. I've moved over, you know, three or four millimeters because you've done that whole section and you're not going to have any registration issues. I'm going to just grab a couple comments here. Sure. Dan's joining us from Vermont or Rhode Island. Sorry, Suzanne, I should know that. <clears throat> and Machid, I don't know where you're joining us, but hello. She just joined, so here we are. Welcome. All right. So one of the functions of Wilcom that I think is, is really neat, that if, if you're wanting to continue with the same settings and angle and everything else as far as like a fill stitch, you can grab an element that you've done, and there is a uh, make properties current function on Wilcom. And what that does is anything that you digitize forward, or you could actually select something else. Like if I had, if I had accidentally digitized this at a weird angle, say, you can select that new, that new element, and then you can apply the current properties, and it's going to go ahead and duplicate the properties of what you copied uh, from before. So I use that a lot when, especially when I'm splitting up elements, like the, the body of the of the penguin itself should be all kind of looking the same same direction make sure the lights hitting it the same right um right and so, why and so can you explain that i know why but i want to make sure other people know why why would you want to make sure that the direction is the same and the light hits that white thread or any other color thread the same why does it matter so i've broken up the penguin for registration issues on a, on a hat for registration purposes but because if you're looking at this at this design here, um, the body of that penguin should all look the same when, when sewn. So the, the artwork shows that that you know that hole from from the face down to the body should should look the same. You know when you're looking at artwork, you're not going to see anything different. You know a white element is a white element. But when you're looking well, with there, red, well, there's you're, another you're, reason I'm thinking too, though, and and that's because the, from what I've seen, even with white, that if if it's at a different angle, even though it weirds out your eyes, there it kind of gives it itself a different color. It's like any when you switch angles of thread, you pick up different elements, and so exactly. then you're still getting different colors. And so, what might happen on the bottom looks white, but if Justin inadvertently or purposefully switched. The angle of his thread it may look silver to people yes absolutely yeah. yeah so that's why i want to continue that same angle to make sure that when the light hits it right. it does look like one fluid right. that's uh, what i wanted was that element yeah and and if yeah just just changing that 10 degrees yeah. your white thread at the top might look like it's it's gray it's gonna yeah. have a different appearance appearance there, there's there's movement when it comes to thread and, and you don't want it to look choppy where it's like oh this part of the body's going this way when this Correct. part of the body's reflecting differently well, so I'm gonna yeah grab a comment here we've got a we've got a question is is this someone's design or is it just for fun and education and suzanne um i think you're going to be pleased with the answer justin it's just for fun and education and uh when yeah. i'm done with it i'll go ahead and uh and throw it in a, a drop box for everybody to to go ahead yeah. and download it's 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 for a hat, Suzanne. It's two point uh, two five inches tall for a hat. So and uh, Vimla is here, and Mashid is from Carmel, California. You and um, let's see, Jeff is like just in shock apparently. He's in shock. He, I guess yeah. I I don't know, man. What is he? <laughs> oh no, Mr. Bill. I don't know. You tell me. So I'm gonna Maybe go he's ahead. His cough syrup. I don't know. <laughs> What's that? Maybe he's taking his cough syrup. I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, we don't know what goes on with that guy, right? <laughs> Maybe. Got one more from Indiana. Hey, Anthony. Thank you all for tuning in, and thank you for noting that we have um, moved to now from later thanks to the uh daylight savings time and then for justin nothing ever changes he just says oh look at six o'clock and then the next month when we're all going somewhere he's like look it's still six o'clock so every all of us have moved so basically jeff i'm gonna i'm gonna have to say 
seems to me that Justin's the center of the universe. If his time never changes and we all, all have to rotate around Arizona time, I think you just got dethroned. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree with you on that point. Yeah, I think so. I think he just yep, you're the center of the universe, as it turns out. What do you know? Okay, so what are you gonna do with the carrot and stuff? This guy is so adorable. With the carrot? The well, mouth? it's nose. I assume that's it. Oh, it's his beak. Never mind. I'm thinking snowman. Listen, it was a big orange, cute, white little cheeks. Snow. I'm thinking carrot. Nose. It isn't. <laughs> no. Okay, so the eyes, they are only about a millimeter and a half wide and two millimeters tall. So when I have dots that are that small, mm -hmm. instead of trying to rely on a typical satin stitch that's going to lay a lot of stitches down and you can possibly have some push and pull to it to kind of elongate and, and kind of distort the shape like a, a circle, uh, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, a star tool in and we'll come and you could actually do this by by hand using manual stitches as well i actually will do a star that just kind of mimics the shape mm -hmm. and when sewn it actually looks like a circle a small little dot is so, that what this is because i couldn't tell right now it does look like you use the star tool but is this a hand thrown stitch no that's the star, okay, tool. So star and, tool and, and it kind of gives you that sh that star mm -hmm. shape mm -hmm. um as far as the density values, I tend to go a little bit higher in the density because, again, you're not trying to hammer so many stitches in there. So I could probably even go a little bit higher than what I already have it at. Um, so even though, even though it looks like it's not very, very filled in there, uh, in actuality, when you're looking at something that's a millimeter by two millimeters, um, you're not going to hammer those stitches in. So it's, it's almost like it's just a lock stitch by itself yeah and then it trims and goes on to the lock stitch yeah so. that's cool i like it vimla likes that you've used that star for the eyes this tool is also pretty cool for like centers of flowers or polka dots or anything like that like if you do a font that has a bunch of polka dot like it's supposed to you know have dots everywhere you could also use it for that because it's circular exactly you can distort it oh. if you like but <laughs> oh and she <laughs> says candle wicking nuts Oh, dude, seriously? No. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Wow. All right. So okay. with these smaller elements, I use that tool with a with a higher uh, density. But you okay. can also use it for, as you can see, the little pink cheeks. It gives you, you a pretty good circle yeah. shape. And then yep. you'll actually want to use a higher density yeah. to make sure that you get a nice filled in shape. I like watching these run because of the way it just goes, you know, it's just yeah. like, it's like it just, it's really sweet and you can hand mimic that. And I know Jeff does it actually. He does do that. Yes. He's, he's, he's a big fan of, of kind of that, that fanning yeah. technique. Purist uh, thing. Yeah. He's a purist. Uh, a lot of our, our 3d stuff that him and I come out with kind of use that technique to to mimic the, the, the yeah. elements and the, and the techniques that we do or, or the shapes that we do. You have more control so. when you do it by hand any day of the week. It takes longer, yeah. but you have a lot more control. So right now I don't have any pink standard on my toolbar, so I'm gonna go ahead and just Ooh, nice. throw pink in there. That's cute. And That's adorable already. So with the mouth, even though the artwork is kind of one solid piece, yeah. you know, a beak's going to have two two sec separate segments to it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually kind of give it some depth and kind of break it into two parts. And what I'm doing here is kind of angling the the satins, a little bit different angles to each other, and that way they don't fall into each other and kind of look like all one part. So that, that light again is gonna hit them just a little bit different, and the, those stitches are gonna lay on top of each other instead mm -hmm. of blending together. You'll also probably pick up like a little glisten or something because of the way that they're puffing like that, that one is gonna kind of have a little bit of light hue, you know? Correct. And that's Correct. gonna be sharp. I like it. And I also like, what I like about this 
is that you've eliminated the need to do zigzags or any kind of a, a preventative stitch down the middle so that they don't bleed together. That's awesome. Okay, right. so we have a question. Would this be a good candidate for a split line? So in other words, use the, the satin tool, I suppose, or the fill and then use a split line, a split treatment to it. You can. I like the treatment. This is like yeah. clean when it gets there and you have control, but. You can. Um... Again, the, the split is gonna is gonna keep the same angle, so you're not gonna have yeah. any differential as far as the light hitting it. Um, so it gives you a little bit more depth and texture there, Jeff. Good but, question. Um, yeah, so and in typically and especially with you, Jeff, since you have like a cabillion different softwares that you work with, um, a lot of times I will do things manually only because one software may not do the same thing as another software oh, and, and because it's in my brain already that I, that I do it manually. There's a lot of tools that do definitely help you out and speed things along, but on something small element like this, I just do it manually. Also, that's kind of like um, one of your tells. I mean, that's like one of like as a digitizer or like any designer and, and uh, Cindy loves that star tool. So she's going to see if she has that. But but the thing is, is that that's going to be something that you might say, you know, I've been doing this for so long. This is just my gig. I I just do lips by hand. I mean, it's just one of those things that when we do that and we find the successful, why play with that? Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's definitely a like like someone told me it's it's digitizer's DNA. I like that. Yeah. Oh, um, I like that. It's just it's just a style that they do. Yeah. Okay. So the the next element I'm going to do is uh, is the scarf here. And even mm -hmm. though even though the the red and the green are somewhat next to each other, I'm going to do the scarf by itself. Again, it's going to add some color changes to it. But when you have two elements like the scarf that that are going to really rely on the on the ends lining up and and the stitches kind of go together, I it's just it's just I tend to Error on the side of caution, and I'm going to make sure that the scarf gets lined up perfectly, and then we're going to go to the hat afterwards. So because you can see here that the, the green elements are kind of overlapping the red on this side and on this side, I'm going to go ahead and start with the red. I'm going to pull up a comment here. Mashid says, never thought about this technique, stars for eyes or dots, and doing the small design manually splits for depth. Thanks. Awesome. I'm glad, you know, that's why we're here. And that's why um, we uh, do what we do every single week. I don't, I, we very rarely miss a week ever. And, and there's four of us and, and we have a good time. So, Absolutely. and we're glad that you guys are here. You guys are the, listen, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Without you, there's no need for any of this. So it's really thanks to you all for showing up and spending your time after your day of work or whatever it is you've done and take time from your family and your home and your, your you know, it is the season to go a little bit crazy right now, but here you are with us. So we're really appreciative for, for you being with us. So and if anybody has any questions, please, please just let us know any questions at all. We want to know. All right. So I'm going to double check my end, uh, starting end points again. I tend to do my start points. If there's any elements that overlap each other, I'll go ahead and do my start points underneath the other element. And that way there is no distortion of that, of that yeah. long stitch, of right. the tiny stitch. So I always end up going underneath another element if, if, if at all possible. Uh, I like that. Start end over here. I want to compensate for the push of this satin to make sure it doesn't push out this way. So I'm going to bring it back just a hair. Nice. And because I am going to be using two satins that are overlapping, what I tend to do is I tend to kind of over exaggerate the angle on one, uh, all the kind of the same direction. Because when I come back and do that green part, I'm going to I'm going to kind of go the opposite direction. So again, you don't have the green and the red kind of falling into each other and getting that zipper effect. If you if you come at them at an angle next to each other, you're going to have less of that of that blending together of the, of the two elements. 
And like on the lips, it, it gives dimension as well. Again, so, yeah. so, but what's interesting is the dimension aspect comes from the doing it that way aspect to have the best success. And here we have a, a comment from Dustin. Both Inga and I are sitting here enjoying the education. Well, we're really glad Spokane. Yeah. <laughs> They're so just can't. over there, <laughs> over my shoulder, down the road, literally. <laughs> the rest of everybody's kind of far away. And I'm kind of start uh, stopping short of this area because I know there's going to be a push at the end of the right. of the satin stitches. Does so everybody that have that? I don't, I'm sorry, Justin, I'm not trying to. No, do go that. ahead, go ahead. Do, do people understand why? Okay, Justin, I, w would you please explain why, since you're using satins, there's going to be a push at the end and why you're dealing with that? So anytime you have the ends of the satin stitches, because those stitches are falling next to each other, especially the heavier density that you use, by the time that all those, those stitches fall together, they're going to push out. So you always want to compensate for the push and on the sides of the satin stitch, you want to compensate for the pull because it's going to definitely pull on the fabric and it's going to push out. So uh, within the software, uh, there is pull compensation where it kind of gives you that extra extra width to make sure you're compensating for that, uh, for the push. Uh, there is some softwares that have those settings that compensate for the push. I've never really been success successful with those settings. No. So it's always mm -hmm. something I do manually. Well, and, and, the, and the thing is, is that when, what he's compensating for is when the the satin stitches pull in on the sides, the fabric that's in there that's getting squeezed by all those stitches is pushing out somewhere. Where's and where's where's everything pushing? It's pushing out at the end, and so right. by re, by leaving room, it's able to move in move itself into that design by natural behavior instead of being manipulated there and then boinking off somewhere. That, that you didn't want it to and you don't know why. Well, that's why. It's because the stitches right. are squeezing and moving with you, for you. So that's why. Exactly. So I know we are kind of running low on time right now. So I'm we, going to yeah. finish off the questions. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay. So I'm not sure where are you asking? Okay. My, my sheet, are you asking him to zoom in? Please wear on the satin or where are you asking? Tell us where and he'll go. I just don't know where. Or do you mean like this? <laughs> um, while I'm finishing off this design, I do have a ghost over my shoulder that is in the comments that is going to throw up a couple of uh, okay. comments for us. Uh, the ghost in the machine being Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do a couple of announcements of, of some stuff we have coming up. So I'm not looking at that screen. So hopefully he's not going to make me a liar. Is cutie pie. Is he posting anything, Jerry? No. Oh, wait. Let, <laughs> me, here, let me go see what's going on. A webinar by Justin is coming up. Oh. Yes. Okay. December, December 4th, I'm going to have a webinar on lettering. It's going to cover not only digitizing lettering, but some tricks and tips for, uh, for stock lettering that you have in your, in your software. Uh, so okay. be watching out for that December 4th. Okay. The Reggie's, what do you say about that? The Reggie's, uh, Looks like we have a uh, quite a bit of us representing the Reggie's Award with two regular guys. Seriously, oh my gosh, look at this! I I didn't know. I honestly, wow, my mind's blown. You want to so read that, have, or do you want me to Jerry, read? That? No, go ahead. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nerds are nominated for best new product. Justin for the three D Puff Pro tool. Woo woo! Best customer service. Sunfacer. Um, nice. Thank you. I, that's exciting. Um, I do enjoy wrapping everything and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Best industry educator, educators, Jiffy and Eric. Woo, Eric Campbell. Okay. <clears throat> Best online education, nerd 9911, the needle bar, the take up. Um, and let's see. 
is the let's see eric oh golly gee okay the take up and eric is the most oh my god i am so oh my gosh dude you're killing me on these the most influential up-and-comers adam fuller what what oh my gosh dude now okay now that almost makes me cry that is the sweetest little up-and-comer i ever heard of he's only 10 okay then we have oh i love it um then we have let's see women in garment decoration oh me jerry lee i i still say it's christine <laughs> um best guest on two regular guys with the embroidery nerds oh hey yeah okay jeff and justin the best ambassador for the uh industry is eric campbell go vote go vote go vote these are all the nominations so go vote so really quick uh a quick little thing that i did here uh for the the proof of the ball i went ahead and used uh the faux chenille uh that luis came up with uh, that was really big cute. fan of it it's uh it's using a a uh, special type of stitch called a stipple stitch uh stem stitch in within wilcom and using the correct set settings you kind of That's get that cute. chenille look um since you know in real life the the ball at the end of a satin hat is kind of a furry ball i thought that might be a, a cool little uh technique to use for the ball cute so I'm going to unhide everything and do a quick redraw so we can kind of go through it and see what the end result is. So don't I have my about the applique getaway. Yes. Uh, Jump in there. On. Applique getaway, uh, you can still register, and I believe that you're going to be able to see the content through sometime in January. I don't have the exact dates in front of me. Exciting. But, uh, use that link there uh it's a special link for for jeff and i uh to to get your signups there uh there's a lot of great content in case you missed it over the weekend i'm not positive but i think you can still watch the live videos that were over the weekend as well as the recorded classes uh jeff and i did a 3d puff pro, uh puff yes class she did. as well as a ton more information from the the industry uh experts on there it was a great show uh so going through here we're doing the body and we're splitting it to the top part of the head and right there i see there is a mistake so oh, cute. sewing the, re the 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 redraw i saw that it was sewing from the top down for this film oh so yeah i'm so, gonna go ahead and and change well, that, on that little puff ball do we need, does Candace would like to know, do, do they need a special thread for that chenille, for the faux chenille? No, and I, absolutely and I would say no, right? No? Okay. The answer nope. is no, you don't. It's a, it's a technique uh, as far as the stitch. That's why it gives you that faux chenille look. Um, mm -hmm. So when, it, when you use regular thread, I know Luis has shown some techniques where he does use the, uh, what is it? The, the real yarn. deal, the real yarn, the chenille yeah. yarn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But again you're gonna have to switch out needles you're gonna have the special thread this is gonna yeah. give you that that same look without using any specialty threads and remember we're at two inches 2.25 inches i mean this is like a little design it's just we're zoomed in that's Correct. all so there is the any questions you know what? there is one thing i need to double check here going back to that uh I'm going to go ahead and grab some super some cute. markers for my, my zero. Because I want, what I want to do is I want to double check at the start and end point. I'm going to go ahead and digitize it manually and yeah. make sure that it is dropping in the proper yeah so it did change so you do have to even though the rulers are giving me the zero where i wanted it to be you do have to manually change that that start and end point to make so sure now, that, that the body is going to be centered on the hat are these guys going to need to change anything when you drop this design is everything going to be like start and stop and and point of origin all set for them that's going to be all set. So that's why I wanted to double check what I did at the very beginning in case you missed it when I when I changed the 
the basically the zero of, of my digitizing screen. That's not going to affect your your start and stop point or your true center of the of the, of the design. So what I did was just using that zero, uh, my ruler, I went ahead and changed the start and stop point to the center of the body instead of the center of the design because the hat is throwing off uh, visually the center. So it's just something that, you know, running on a, on a hat, especially on a six panel hat, visually you want to really center the, the majority of the design on that on that scene, in my opinion. But it is, you know, from, from design to design, you might, choose to do that or may not it just depends but as we know justin's in the center of the universe so everything that's is right. centered where he is that's right <laughs> so unless anybody else has any questions we have the links below for the uh virtual okay. appellate, appellate getaway uh jump in there and vote for your favorite nerds on the reggie awards at the Chili yeah. guys website yep uh, we have my webinar coming up on December 4th on lettering. Which we'll throw out there, which I don't have a thing for right now. Maybe I and, do. Uh, and Jeff did answer on the applique getaway that they can't no, see the live videos. Um, just a reminder that we are going an hour earlier during daylight savings time. So it's going to be the next. Oh, wait, that moved. Yep. Thank whatever, you so much, guys. Whatever. Uh, how many months daylight saving times is where all those? Oh, they do this to us for six months. In a little while, we're going to have to spring forward and lose the sleep that we had to take. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, it is so like, you know, that Native American that has been said that it's Native American, but you cannot cut the bottom of a blank of a blanket off, stitch it on top and make a longer blanket. Really? Exactly. I mean, come on, man. When are these people going to learn? Okay. Exactly. So um, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how the puff stuff, new product would work with this design to give it even more dimension. I could possibly do a little uh, 3D puff on this it to could. add a little bit of dimension. Um, this but was- it, but Isn't there a product though she's, they're talking about? Barb, aren't you talking about a uh, some other, like it? it's an old product I think that's coming back again, but it puffs stuff and then I think you wash it away or something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. But so, uh, let's see. We've got Anthony saying thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for welcome. joining us. Uh, Vimla, thank you, Justin and Jerry Lee. Uh, watch from the beginning whenever you have time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the great design. And again, uh, once I finish this up, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in you know all the major formats, DST, PES, EXP. I will throw a uh, drop Dropbox link out on, in the group so everybody can uh, play with this design and make some hats. Yeah, make some hats out there, y'all. Have a good day. One, one quick thing, even though this was specifically done for hats, it can be done on flats as well. It's not, it's not going to not work yeah. on flats. This is just specifically done in a way to make it work on a hat for you. So. Yeah, and always remember that, that if you have a hat design, yes, you can put it on a flat. But can you put a flat design on a hat? Probably not. Yeah. So that's the deal. One goes one way, doesn't go both ways. The door doesn't swing both ways. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, guys. And uh, thank you, Jeff, you for helping you out from behind Happy the Thanksgiving. Scenes. Yes, and happy Thanksgiving. Well, we we'll see you guys next week. Oh, yeah, we'll see you next week. But... Uh, Happy uh, happy Tuesday. Let's roll into Wednesday. Let's whip this week out. All right, guys. Have a good See night. Yeah. Bye. Bye.